This is Techopolis 2, a 1.19 questing mod pack in which we start very much in the same way as other skyblocks on a fairly large dirt platform here with an oak tree in the center and a regular Minecraft chest, giving us a ceramic lava bucket, two blocks of ice, some wheat, some apples, and a spare sapling. So the idea with the ceramic lava bucket here, I believe is that as soon as we place it down, the bucket will be destroyed. And so we really do only have one chance to put that down initially. After that, it is uh, is gone. We have to leave the lava where it is. Of course, this is a questing pack. And so we do have a quest book available to us. And quite helpfully, the very first quest page here gives us information about the pack. It says, welcome to Techopolis 2, a mod pack all about automation. And uh, as a reward here, we get some tech books, which are the main currency in this pack. In fact, I do believe there's a quest on tech books themselves. It says right here, these are used to purchase research and items in the research papers quest line. We have miners available to us. Miners are big multi-block structures that can be used to mine ores and blocks forever. Miners require 36 of the ore block. These can be upgraded by placing new caps on the top. So instead of having ex nihilo, instead of doing sifting or anything like that, we have these miners that have been added to allow us to generate an unlimited number of a given resource once we have a decent amount of that resource. And then as we progress through the pack, we can upgrade those miners to higher tiers using the higher tier capstones to get even more production going. Techium is awesome. Techium is a powerful material used to make various different items. We'll get to that in a little bit here. World types. This mod pack can be played in a range of different ways, including normal, super flat, hex lands, and skyblock. We are playing the skyblock version, but you can also play this mod pack in like a standard overworld Minecraft if you so wish. We can join the Discord if we'd like to help. Ben does have a, a very thriving Discord that you can join if you need help with any of this stuff. The research papers here are quite interesting because in this pack, certain uh, mods and certain recipes are locked off from the beginning, and we have to use research papers and tech books to unlock and progress further into the pack. As is stated here, this mod pack uses game stages to block certain mods, items, and blocks until they can be unlocked using research papers. And then finally, uh, no hostile mobs will naturally spawn in the world, meaning you are safe to work through the night. Ores and most structures do not spawn either. So that is the information quest line. And right here, you'll see that uh, the quest book is broken down into chapters. There are quite a few of them. The one that we start with is basic tech here. This is kind of the beginning of the quest book. But this section right here for research papers is where we can unlock stuff. So there's basic, advanced, elite, ultimate, and remaining research. These kind of correlate to the different tiers. So as you move through the different tiers of the quest book, you can then start to unlock the different tiers of research. For example, right here, if you've played some mod packs before, you'll be familiar with the time in a bottle. But in order to get that time in a bottle, we have to hand in 48 tech books and the research paper for the time in a bottle. And this requires advanced techium ingots, which we're not going to get until later on in the game. And so there is uh, a little bit of progression added by the gating of certain recipes, certain mods and certain items behind these research papers. The initial quest though, over here, is of course to cut down a tree. We do have the FTB Ultimine mod installed, and so if we hold our FTB Ultimine key, we can tear the whole tree down at once, and I am very surprised. I really thought we were going to get at least one <laughs> sampling from that. The good news is that uh, we got a spare sampling, which we can go ahead and throw down. Hopefully, this time around, we do actually get a sampling from this. I don't think that we have crooks. We don't, because of the fact that uh, we don't have Ex Nihilo in the pack, so we are kind of hoping that we do get a sampling from this uh, secondary tree here. And uh, real quick, if we do this, we can complete the quest for planks and the quest for a crafting table. All right, let's give this a second go here. Hold down the Ultimine key. Please give me a, a sampling. We did, we got exactly one sampling. Okay, what I'm probably gonna do, just to try and make sure we definitely get a sampling, I am gonna craft up a bunch of slabs here and just expand out this platform ever so slightly to make sure that anything that uh, the drops from the tree is collectible. All right, so we've got a slightly wider platform now. Let's try this at least one more time. Hopefully, we get multiple saplings from this tree. Again, only one. If you do happen to get exactly zero saplings, thankfully, there is an emergency item button in the quest book here. Uh, for those who don't know, by the way, you can click this button in the top left of your inventory screen to open the quest book, or you can set it to a keybind in the uh, control settings if you want to just be able to open it from in the world. 
If you click on emergency items, it starts a countdown. You do have to wait 30 seconds, but once this 30 second timer hits zero, you will get two new books, the books that you start with, and you'll get an extra sampling. So you don't have to completely restart if you don't happen to get a sampling from your first couple of trees. But uh, if we want to progress through the quest book here, we need a regular Minecraft chest. That is easy enough. In fact, we probably could have picked this one up to be fair, but uh, that's fine. We then need a regular wooden pickaxe that is also completely fine. I don't think we need any logs, so there's probably no need to keep those. And then from there, we can now make our first miner and we can start to mine cobblestone. So to get cobblestone, we are gonna have to set up a cobblestone generator, which we can of course do with the lava and the water that we start with here. And then I believe that the idea initially is that we can use our first miner to basically set up a cobblestone generator. If we look in this book right here, the miner's first edition, that's gonna kind of tell us more information about how the miner works, but the initial miner is actually super easy to make. It's four logs, four planks, and a pickaxe, which is very easy for us to do. And in fact, does mean that we did need extra logs. So ignore what I said earlier. Again, very light on the samplings. I'm really hoping we don't have to use the, uh, the emergency items here. We hopefully should be able to get we didn't get a single sampling. What in the world? Okay, we are actually going to have to wait for 30 seconds to get the emergency items. All right, and 30 seconds later, there we go. We got the items. Fantastic. So I'm going to throw away the two extra copies of this book that we have. And uh, we'll keep the two books that we do need. In fact, the miner's book, I think we did just get given here. We did, and we've not unlocked it yet. We actually get it as a reward for this quest but uh, if we look in here real quick it does tell us about the miners and it shows us the structure that we have to build and this is kind of the first structure that we're going to build we're going to build the mining frames with a miner at the top a chest above that and then underneath it we're going to place 36 cobblestone and that is going to set up a tier one miner and that is then going to slowly but surely produce an unlimited amount of cobblestone and deposit all that cobblestone into the chest above the miner that is if we uh, actually do get some kind of sampling, fantastic. I think it is better if you um, break the leaves. I think you're more likely to get a sampling if you break the leaves as opposed to letting them decay naturally. And so maybe that's a better choice for us. We don't have the carry on mod, I don't think, which means I, oh no, we do, Never mind. Okay, let me move this over here. Uh, for those who don't know, you can just uh, shift right click with the carry on mod, and then that lets you uh, move items that you've already placed down fairly easily. Very useful for chests because you can move the chests with the items inside of them. Once we've done that, we can then plant a couple of trees and then look at growing all of those at once. And then we'll go ahead and break some more of these to get some more saplings, fantastic. And of course, we can then chop down a bunch of wood all at once. Cool. So back over here, if we look for the miner in JEI, we can then click move items and it's gonna use our pre-existing pickaxe, but we get our first miner. As a reward, we get a second copy of the miner's book, which I guess for now, we can place away into our chest here. And then now we've got a couple of things to do. One, we have the quest for the tier one support frames. So the way the miners work, as you may have noticed in the quest book here, the colors of the support frames are changing. And that's because there are different tiers of support frame. And in fact, if you go to the miner and you press U while hovering over it, and then go over to miners, you can see all of the different blocks that you can generate with miners. For example, right here, uh, this is unfamiliar, but this one is emerald ore. Emerald ore can be mined, so you'd need 36 emerald ore, and then you place that underneath the miner, but it requires tier seven support frames, which of course are a lot more expensive than what we currently have. They require diamonds. We don't currently have diamonds. Right now, we can only make the tier one support frames, which are substantially easier to make. It's just sticks and planks, and in order to complete this quest right here, we need quite a few of them. I don't think it tells me how many we need, but we need 5, 10, 15, 20, plus 12. So I think we need 32 support frames per miner. Chat is right that it does tell you in JEI how many you need, it just doesn't tell you in the quest book or in the, uh, the miner's guide, but uh, yes, 32 is correct. And so for that, we're going to have to get quite a lot of sticks. Again, thankfully we do have a decent amount of wood now and we are finally getting more saplings. So we'll craft a ton of those and then we'll do something like this and like this. We got 42, which is more than we need, but we are almost certainly going to want to set up more than one miner. And so having excess is completely fine. And then as it mentioned in the quest book, there are different caps that you can put onto the miners to increase the speed at which you get certain resources. So if we look here, you can see that diamond blocks are gonna get us the cobblestone faster than no blocks. And I think fences are 
the very first kind of cap stones you can make. Again, if you hover over the miner and press U, there's a tab here for cap blocks, and it shows you the different cap blocks you can use, and it shows you how many ticks per block. So by default, as it says in the book here, it takes 220 ticks in order to get one resource. 220 ticks, eh, there are 20 ticks per second in Minecraft, so that's 11 seconds per block. And so when we set up our initial cobblestone generator, we're going to get one cobblestone every 11 seconds, which is pretty slow, but it is free and doesn't require any kind of power or upkeep. However, if we go ahead and throw on some fence posts, the fence posts here change that to 200 ticks per block. It's not a massive speed upgrade because fences aren't particularly expensive, but it's gonna bring down that default speed of 220 ticks per block down to 200 ticks per block, basically meaning that it's gonna take uh, 10 seconds per cobblestone instead of 11, which is a small upgrade, but one that I guess is worth investing in. For that, we are going to need four fence posts, boom and boom. And now the only thing that we're missing in order to actually get this up and running is 36 cobblestone. So for that, we do need to place down the lava and the ice. Ideally, somewhat far away from the wood that we have here, what I might do real quick, I might get us a shovel. And as we noted at the beginning of the episode, this center dirt platform is pretty big. And so I might just quickly kind of dip down here and take a lot of this dirt so we can kind of expand out a little bit without using wood, which is going to allow us to set up a space for the cobblestone generator. All right, so I've taken out basically all of the dirt apart from the very bottom level here. And what I think I'm gonna do now is probably chop down a few more trees to get some more wood. I think I'll expand this platform out a little bit. I'll make some of the platform out of dirt and not oak. And then I'm going to try and set things up in such a way that we can set up a cobblestone generator that produces more than one cobblestone at a time. Currently, we only have two blocks of ice, but I do think that sooner rather than later, we are going to be able to unlock these ceramic buckets here. In fact, I don't think this is that hard to do because of the fact that in the Skyblock version of this mod pack, what we should be able to do here is craft some of our wood into wooden shears. We do need to make sure that we at least get one sampling back. And so real quick, let me take this one. If we then use the shears on the leaves, we can then just get the leaves, of course, and chop down the remainder of the tree. From there, what we can do is we can craft these leaves into dirt. This is a Skyblock specific recipe. We can then craft the dirt into gravel, and then we can craft the gravel into sand, and then we can craft the sand into clay. And then we can take that clay, and as soon as we get some kind of furnace, we can then smelt that into a ceramic bucket, which is then going to allow us to use our two ice blocks here to get an unlimited water source. Once we have that unlimited water source, we can then put down more than two source blocks, at which point we should be able to set up a cobblestone generator that can produce quite a lot of cobblestone every time we break a block, especially in conjunction with Ultimine. And that's going to allow us to get a lot more cobblestone a lot more quickly, which I think is gonna be very useful for getting the large amount of cobblestone needed to get this cobblestone generator up and running. One of the slightly annoying things about the uh, the research papers is that by default, the building ones are locked behind an upgrade. So I think this one right here, we have to spend eight tech books and the construction ones research paper if we want to unlock building ones, which is gonna make it a little bit more tedious to build out this starting platform here because we currently don't have access to coal, auto, bronze ingots. And so for the time being, we do have to place down a lot of this stuff manually. Another thing to point out, if you do fall out of the world, as I just did, you do respawn back in the sky. And if you have full health and only full health, then you will survive the fall, only just. If you fall down with anything other than perfectly full health, you will die when you land. But it's a lot more easy to, uh, to get to your gravestone once you die, if you uh, land on your platform, so you can get your stuff back fairly easily. Okay, so I've expanded out the platform quite a bit here. We have a decently large platform with an oak log edge, which I think is looking a little nicer than just the slabs. And over here, I placed down some temporary dirt for a temporary cobblestone generator. Because as I showed a second ago, I want to get some clay first so that we can make more buckets, so that we can get more water, so that we can make a more efficient cobblestone generator to get more cobblestone faster. Initially though, we're gonna go ahead, place down the ice, get some water. 
we can then place down the lava, like so. And so long as the lava touches the flowing water like this, we get cobblestone. Very standard vanilla Minecraft cobblestone generator. Once we have that, we can then begin mining cobblestone with a wooden pickaxe. And of course, as soon as we get to eight cobblestone, we should then be able to make a standard Minecraft furnace, at which point we can then start to look at doing the whole uh, leaves into dirt, dirt into gravel. And in fact, I guess we already had a lot of dirt from what we took out of the, uh, the base. I probably didn't need to craft all of our leaves into it, but we can turn dirt into gravel, gravel into sand, sand into clay. And then of course we can craft that clay. Thank you, Ben, for adding this recipe into clay balls. And we can then use those clay balls to make things like clay buckets. And again, as soon as we have eight cobblestone, we can then cook those unfired clay buckets into fired clay buckets, which can then be used to pick up this water and then pick up the other bucket of water that we have, thus allowing us to make an unlimited water source. Boom, that is our furnace. We'll throw that down and boom, that is gonna get us some buckets. Now, unlike with the lava, when you pick up water, the buckets don't break. So those are gonna be completely fine. Over in the corner here, let's do maybe something like this. Somebody in the Twitch chat did also point out that if we make a water source, it's quite possible that if we fall through the void and from the, um, the sky again, even if we don't have full health, if we land in some water, we might be able to survive the fall. So I'm just gonna go ahead, take this, place it down over here in the opposite diagonal corner to the first water. And now we have unlimited water that we can place wherever we like. I'm also gonna re-pick up the lava here. Again, just like last time, this bucket will be destroyed once we place the lava down. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a design that was just sent to me via the Discord, which you can join by the way, discord.gg forward slash GRC is a link in the description. Uh, real quick, let's do something like this just to make our lives that little bit easier. But essentially, we are gonna find the center of this little area, which is here. You'll see I've already put some dirt around this area. And we're kind of gonna extend the platform this way a bit for the cobblestone generator. And the thought process here is that we're going to have the lava right here in the middle, like this. The lava is then gonna flow out to the sides and on top of some blocks. So I'm gonna put down some oak here to kind of show where we're gonna get cobblestone. One, two, three, four, five and one, two, three, four, and then we need one more plank here for five. So the idea here is that this cobblestone generator should hopefully be able to produce 10 cobblestone at a time as opposed to one cobblestone at a time. And the idea behind this one is that we're going to try and use waterlogged stairs to produce the generator. This is not something I've tried before, so I'm kind of taking a bit of a, a gamble here, but the idea is that we place down one, two, three, four, five stairs like this, and then on this side, we do one, two, three, four, five stairs like that. And then we'll use dirt for now, but I think we'll probably end up uh, swapping the dirt out for maybe some logs to make it look a little bit nicer. But if we do one, two, three, four, five with one here, and the same on the other side, we do you, and then one, two, three, four, five, just to stop the water flowing out. What we should then be able to do is take our other ceramic bucket and begin moving water into the stairs like this. We should to right click onto the dirt like that. And ideally, when the lava flows on top of these planks, we're gonna get rid of these planks, obviously, but when the lava flows on top of those planks, we should then be able to produce cobblestone, which we can then mine. All right, so once we've got the 10 water source blocks in the waterlogged stairs, we can then get rid of the oak planks. The water is going to stay where it currently is, but Hopefully, what should happen here is that once we place the lava here, it's gonna kind of flow out to the left and right and then across all of the areas where the oak planks used to be. And hopefully, it's gonna produce cobblestone. And also, hopefully, it's not going to burn our entire base down. Let's give it a try. If I put the lava here, I'm gonna be ready to pick it up if it doesn't work, but it does produce cobblestone, and then it kind of spreads out. More cobblestone is produced, and once again, more cobblestone is produced, and that's as far as it goes, which is good. Now, the only bit that could be slightly tricky is getting all this cobblestone without it burning, which I think should be fine. It might be easier if we build out like a little area for us to stand in that's, that's kind of a little lower down. And for that, we can probably go under here. So if I do kind of something like that, can I then go and kind of stand here and just mine this cobblestone. Again, if we hold all to mine, annoyingly it doesn't connect, which means we are gonna have to mine five at a time. So we can mine like this five, 
and then this five. But the question then is, can we actually get that cobblestone? Because uh, if we can't, this could be an issue. Let me try moving just a little bit closer here. Okay, so chat is telling me that we can make this work if we kind of lower the floor by one. So right now, beneath the cobblestone is just planks. If we were to get rid of these planks and lower the floor down by one, hopefully the, uh, the cobblestone should just fall instead of getting instantly burnt. All right, this does seem to be working fairly well. And so uh, let's see here if we can't get, at the very least, 36 cobblestone. That's going to allow us to set up our initial cobblestone generator. But then we are also going to want more after that to allow us to progress further in the paint. Another option here that might well work, actually, is these wooden hoppers. If we were to place down, we're making this quite um, advanced now, like unnecessarily so maybe, but uh, if we were to make 10 wooden hoppers, we could then put down five under each cobblestone, and I think that would push all the cobblestone directly into a chest, which would be pretty good. If we wanted 10 wooden hoppers, we are going to first need 10 chests, but that should be fine for the most part. Real quick though, before we do any of that, let's get this uh, cobblestone generator with our initial miner up and running. So the best way or the easiest way for us to do this, I think, is going to be, first of all, for us to claim all of our tech books, but then secondarily for us to unlock the structure placer. So the structure placer requires four tier one support frames and a miner. Unfortunately, you don't get the miner back, but this is reusable. And the good news is, is that we can make another wooden pickaxe very easily. We are then going to need a couple more logs in order to make another miner, but we can, of course, shift to make these trees grow nice and quick. Fantastic. Did lose our axe there, but that's fine. We do have the cobblestone now to build a fresh axe. And also, uh, using Ultimine does use your hunger up quite a lot, so we should make sure that uh, we top ourselves up with apples there. Let's get rid of the rest of the wood. Fantastic. And back over here, let's get another tier one miner. So, using the uh, structural guide, by default here, you can change the way it works by shift clicking. So placing minor frame or placing tree absorber frame. We want this placing minor frame. And basically what that's gonna do is if we have all of the structural frames, again, 32, and we have the minor, it should place everything down when you right click like this. Nice. And so this just placed all the frames down for us. We are then going to place down 36 cobblestone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We then need to do that four times, going all the way up to just below where the uh, the frame kind of ends here. And then once we've got all 36 cobblestone down, we place the miner on top of that, like so. And the final piece of the puzzle is to make a regular Minecraft chest. Uh, these structure frames do act as scaffolding, so you can climb up them. And if you place the chest on top, now, once every 11 seconds, we're going to get a cobblestone. Nice. And if we take our oak fences and do one two, three, and four, we have now upgraded our miner, and we're gonna get one cobblestone every 10 seconds, as opposed to every 11. Cool. And so that is gonna kind of passively produce cobblestone for us, but I have a feeling we're gonna need a lot more cobblestone than that, because if we look over here at this next quest, it calls for 27 furnaces to allow us to build a jumbo furnace. Now, usually the jumbo furnace is just kind of a faster way of smelting items, or like a bulk way, of smelting items, but in this pack, certain recipes like smelting cobblestone into stone require the jumbo furnace. So we need to get 27 furnaces, which is 27 lots of eight cobblestone, which is a fair bit of cobblestone. And so what I think I'm gonna see about here is actually getting those wooden hoppers down underneath our current cobblestone generator to see if we can't make this just a lot more efficient than it currently is. So real quick, if we do this, we should be able to get enough wood to build 10 wooden hoppers, I think, very easily. And then ideally after that, we'd also want to get uh, two chests, one for each side. Although I guess if we make one extra wooden hopper, we might be able to uh, to combine, oops, I'm trying to stand in the waterlogged step and that does not work. There we go. Uh, we might be able to combine all of the uh, the cobblestone into one chest, which I think would be, um, would be more ideal. So let us see here. Wooden hopper is like this. Fantastic. We can make, of course, even more of these like this, and then we're gonna place each one of those underneath the pre-existing cobblestone and kind of facing into each other, headed towards one single chest. We definitely should get that chest down first so we know what we're feeding into. So let's do this. 
And I think we do have what it takes to make like one or two extra wooden hoppers just to make this a little bit more efficient. So my idea here is that if we were to place our chest down, let's say right about here, actually, you know what? Let's place it here like that. That's probably gonna be fewer hoppers. Then if we go down, we should be able to start feeding into that chest I shouldn't use Ultimine there, otherwise that is going to break all of the slabs that I've used for the entirety of the base, which is not ideal. So if we do something like this and like this, now that cobblestone should fall directly into that hopper. And basically we're just going to run all the way back, shift clicking into all of the hoppers like this. And that way any cobblestone that is produced should get collected by the wooden hoppers and then should feed through all of the wooden hoppers round into that centralized chest. All right, let's give this a try. So now I want to know how many of these we get. If I mine those, we should get hopefully five cobblestone here. It does take a second to come in, but that's fine because now we can kind of just basically stand right here at the front and just mine each one of these individually. And at the time it takes for one of these to come back, we've already started mining the next one. And slowly but surely, all of the cobblestone should make its way into this chest. Pretty cool stuff. And we're also, of course, getting all of the extra cobblestone from over here, which is extra nice. And of course, that's going to make it a lot easier for us to get all of the cobblestone that we need to make 27 regular Minecraft furnaces. All right, so quite a bit of cobblestone later, and also however much cobblestone we have up in here, 39, not bad, but not great. Uh, over here, we can now do something like this to get eight, 16, almost, <laughs> 24, and then we need 27. Look at that, perfect. That actually worked out surprisingly well. All right, that gets us a tech book and also gives us the ability to build the jumbo furnace, which for those who are unaware, is a big old three by three by three furnace. So you basically just put down all 27 of these furnaces in a three by three by three cube, and boom, we get a jumbo furnace. In here, you can put up to nine stacks of fuel and nine stacks of things to be smelted. And now we can begin actually completing the next quests. Uh, this one should have completed, I would have hoped, but it hasn't. That's fine. It says jumbo furnace and the reward is a jumbo furnace. Each additional jumbo furnace placed into the bottom right slot of the jumbo furnace will allow the furnace to smelt an additional item. Each additional jumbo furnace placed into the slot, into this slot? How do you craft, can you craft a jumbo furnace? Oh no, you can smelt 27. Oh, I see. So I need to get another 216 cobblestone to make another 27 furnaces, which I can then smelt into one jumbo furnace. And then each additional jumbo furnace that I place into the first jumbo furnace will allow it to smelt an additional item. So you can put up to 64 jumbo furnaces in here, which would equate to 13,824 cobblestone. But then in doing so, it will smelt 64 items at a time, which is, is pretty great. Chat is telling me that I can use my wooden shears on the jumbo furnace, but uh, it doesn't work, unfortunately. I think we have to, in this pack at least, I think we have to make and, uh, and smelt 27 furnaces to get another one, which should be pretty doable because we can get cobblestone quite quickly with our cobblestone generator and we're making it somewhat slowly over here. Speaking of this though, one of the first research papers that we might want to unlock is this one right here for the Compressium mod. For that, we do first need to get a smooth stone. That should be fine though. Let me get at least one cobblestone out of here and let's get that smelted in here. It's by default, not that fast. It's just like a standard Minecraft furnace, but uh, this should get us our first stone and then our first smooth stone. And the idea I believe is that once we get the Compressium mod unlocked. We then unlock compressed cobblestone and we can place compressed cobblestone here instead of regular cobblestone, at which point this will start producing one compressed cobblestone every 10 seconds as opposed to one regular cobblestone every 10 seconds. And also by the looks of it, it looks like I didn't uh, complete this quest for stone because I didn't actually put the stone in my inventory, which is, uh, is my bad. But uh, at that point, we essentially generate nine cobblestone every 10 seconds as opposed to one cobblestone every 10 seconds, which is, um, is a big upgrade. So boom and boom, fantastic. Uh, we'll get to the tree absorber in a second here, but now we should have unlocked the ability to unlock this bit of research. So four tech books is easy enough. We have 23 of them, so we'll do something like that. And then we do need the research paper for Compressium. For that, we need four logs, four smooth stone, and then one blank research paper, which is eight paper. So let's put a few more cobblestone in here to get some more stone. The paper should be pretty doable for us, I think. 
we can use a drawing table, which I'll bookmark. By the way, if you hover over something in JEI, press A, it will bookmark it, and then A again to unbookmark it. Uh, it just means you don't have to keep searching for it over and over again. But uh, here, we can get a drawing table. We can dry soaked paper into regular paper, and soaked paper we can make with log sheets and a ceramic water bucket. And log sheets are just planks. They're just uh, pressure plates. So if we do this, get those smelting, in here, we should be able to make a bunch of plates, which we can then craft into log sheets. We do get, it's a one-to-one -one and we need exactly eight, so this is perfect. So now we just need to craft those with a bucket of water. Thankfully, we already have an unlimited water source and a water bucket, so we can do this. And thankfully, there's a mod added that allows us to leave things in the crafting table, which is very nice indeed. And boom. So now for the drying table, we do need string. And for string, we need hemp fiber and for hemp fiber we need hemp seeds which are going to be a bit of a pain but i think what we should be able to do here is get a standard minecraft composter throw that down use that to get bone meal i do believe we can put leaves in here to get that bone meal and then if we bone meal the grass and then break it we should be able to get some uh, some hemp seeds hopefully somewhat quickly so let's real quick get some more leaves that we can then throw into our composter over here. Chat has pointed out we do have leafy string as an option. This might work actually. Hold on, let me see here. If I get some more shears. Worst case scenario, it's gonna let us build a bed, which I think is gonna be quite useful. We do wanna be careful not to burn our, uh, our base down by having a <laughs> our leaves catch fire. But uh, if I do this, that gets us leafy string. And also, actually, I completely forgot. I think we can make sugarcane chant. I think we can, I think we just saw it then. We can craft leaves into cactus. We can craft cactus into kelp. We can craft kelp into bamboo. And we can craft bamboo into sugarcane, which actually is going to make life a lot easier in terms of getting paper. And that makes getting the uh, the blank research paper substantially easier. So completely ignore whatever I was just saying about, um, about using the strainer. Instead, if we were to do something like, uh, first of all, I'm going to share some of these leaves because worst case scenario, I would like to make a bed so that we can sleep through the night, which the leafy string is going to allow us to do. So if we do this and I guess this, we can then get one more green wall and then we can of course craft that green wall with regular planks to get ourselves a, a nice green bed, which for now we'll place somewhere over here. I do kind of want to know if we can use the strainer anywhere because we do have these, uh, you know, soaked paper that I could kind of do with getting rid of. So I am interested if this leafy string can be used in place of regular string. Unfortunately, it looks like the answer to that is no. Like, we can use regular sticks there, but it looks like the leafy string just isn't going to work, which is unfortunate. Uh, I do wonder if you can craft leafy string into regular string. You can't. And I'm assuming we can't craft, like, green wool into regular wool either, unfortunately. That is fine, though. Like I said, we don't necessarily need it. For now, we can just go ahead and uh, drop the uh, soaking wet paper into the system. And instead, we can look at uh, getting a couple more logs to allow us to make this research paper for compressed cobblestone. I think that should be everything. Over here, do we have what it takes? We totally do. Fantastic. All we have to do is hand that in here. Submit. And I believe in doing that, you'll see that we've now unlocked X Compressum. And so I think we should now be able to make compressed cobblestone, which I don't believe we could before. And as you can see here, if we can get 36 compressed cobblestone, we can then set up a miner that can produce one compressed cobblestone every 10 seconds. It does, however, require a tier two support frame. And so we are going to need some more regular stone for that, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and uh, see how much cobblestone we've collected. 36, that is fine. Let's put like 32 in here. Get that smelting up. While we wait for that to smelt up, I am going to break a ton more cobblestone because if we want to get 36 compressed cobblestone, we need 324 regular cobblestone that we can then craft down into 36 compressed blocks that we can then use to, uh, to upgrade our cobblestone generator. All right, so a little bit of cobble mining later. We can now craft that down into compressed cobblestone. Fantastic. We can also take a quick nap in our newly minted green bed. And real quick, one thing I'm also going to do here, I'm going to turn off the minimap. Uh, you can use the plus and minus keys to make it a bit more useful, but given we're playing the Skyblock variant, I don't find the minimap to be that useful in general. Uh, so if you press J and then click Options and then Minimap Preset 1 and then just untick Enable Minimap, that's going to get rid of it. You can also change it to make it like square and, and do some other stuff with it. But for now, I don't think we need it and we can always turn it back on in the future should we uh, decide that we need it. Over here, we can now 
get rid of the cobblestone here. Although, I did just do that. <laughs> um, what I was going to say, it might have been worth just keeping it around. Because we also need to tear down all of the, the frames, right? Because we need to replace this with tier 2 frames. But I think that's fine. What we can do here, we can go ahead and grab our axe. And use that to tear down the tier 1 supports. That's fine. Over here, we've got a little bit of stone. I'm not quite sure, actually, if 19 is going to be enough. And we might also need some more sticks as well now that I look at it. But uh, let's find out. Tier 2 support frame. Boom and boom. We needed 32, I believe, which is more than 27. Uh, all we're missing, though, is a couple more sticks. And we do have quite a lot of oak planks in the chest here. And so, boom and boom. Nice. Once again, uh, I'm going to get rid of these support frames, and I'm going to just right-click, ideally, here. Nice, and that kind of instantly rebuilds the tier 2 support frames. And so now, we should just be able to replace down the compressed cobble, and we should have effectively multiplied the amount of cobblestone that we're generating from this cobblestone generator by 9, which is going to make it substantially faster than it was a second ago, and is also going to make it a lot easier for us to get... Uh, more jumbo furnaces and make our pre-existing jumbo furnace that much faster so now we get the compressed cobblestone which we can then just craft down again into regular cobblestone which is a huge upgrade and i'm assuming there's probably some kind of early game auto crafting that we could potentially look into doing so if we wanted to auto craft this down although there's also potentially the option of getting something like a compacting draw at some point in the not so distant future which again i do believe yes we have to uh unlock but if we do unlock the compacting draw we uh, we could then potentially look at automatically kind of decompressing the cobblestone for now though let me quickly see about getting enough cobblestone to get at least one more jumbo furnace to allow us to see about making our current jumbo furnace that little bit faster and again not too long later we've got quite a lot of cobblestone so let's do something like this and like that boom and it looks like you can actually just craft directly with compressed cobblestone, which I did not know. Um, unfortunately, we do have, never mind, quite the bang on the right amount. Look at that, 30, 34. So uh, one more try here with the shears. Oh, it totally works if you sneak right click. Look at that. So that gives us the jumbo furnace. Good to know. Um, and it also gives us a reward of an extra jumbo furnace. On top of that, we can also put uh, 27 of these in here, along with some fuel. That's going to get us a second jumbo furnace. And in doing so, what we should now be able to do is take both of our new jumbo furnaces, put both of those into the pre-existing jumbo furnace, like this, and now when we go to smelt something like cobblestone, it should smelt, I think, th all three of those at the same time. And it totally did. Nice. So we now have essentially three furnaces in one. And again, we can put up to uh, 64 jumbo furnaces in there to allow us to, uh, to smelt a stack of items at a time. And given that we're getting cobblestone passively from this cobblestone generator, it, uh, it probably shouldn't take us that long to, uh, to actually get a lot of jumbo furnaces in there and uh, be able to smelt quite a lot, which is nice. So now the final two quests down here are for light gray colored stone, which is just smooth stone smelted. So let's quickly get some more smooth stone made and then we'll smelt that after the fact. And then there's also the quest here for the tree absorber. The tree absorber is a huge multi-block that will create tree resources for you. See the mining guidebook for more information. So much like with our multi-block cobblestone miner here if we once again check the miner's guidebook there is also a section for the tree absorber tree absorbers are massive multi-block structures that can be used to collect tree resources various different caps can be applied to the tree absorber to make it faster some trees will drop additional items so this is real big we need a bunch again of frames i wonder with this if you actually need different tiers of frames for different trees or if it's just you get more if you go for a higher tier frame Either way, we need the tree absorber itself. We need one piece of dirt. We then need a bunch of frames. I assume, if I look at the recipe for a log, it will tell us here that we need 64 tier 1 support frames and then one tree absorber. And then we need to build this giant structure here. Again, thankfully, the structure placer is going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. So, right now, we have 38 tier 1 support frames. And given that we have a little bit of wood here, we might be able to make... A few more, although I have a feeling we're not going to quite have enough to get up to the required 64. Yeah, we're very close, but not quite there. So real quick, let's do some tree placing. We are going to have to specifically build, I believe, like a very specific tree shape like this. You can't just grow any given tree. I think it has to be shaped like this. Given that, the uh, structure placer here does also allow you to go into 
placing the tree for the tree absorber. And so I think we're going to need more wood, but also more leaves so that we can manually place those leaves down for the, uh, the custom tree inside of the tree absorber. So let's get some more leaves here. I think a stack and 22 is probably enough. Just to play it safe though, let's get a few more leaves here. And of course, a little bit more in the way of wood. And as per usual, of course, our X breaks just before breaking every single last log. That would have been far too easy, but that should now, I think, be enough planks for us to make enough sticks to make the remaining support frames to get us over 64. Nice. So this is very big. I think it's like a seven by seven by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which means we could technically place it here. But I think what I might do is real quick, we'll take the smooth stone here. I'm going to uh, pick up the jumbo furnace and I think I'm going to move that over to this side for the time being. We'll put that down kind of right about there with the jumbo furnaces back in. We'll of course again start smelting down this smooth stone into the light gray colored stone. And then we'll expand out this way in a similar way to how I've expanded out this way to, uh, to give us space to build the tree absorber. All right, so I've built out a new platform here, seven by seven by seven, starting here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. And then it's seven wide as well. And unlike the miner, the tree absorber does output to the bottom. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna build the whole thing kind of on top of this chest. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. This is the center, and it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, perfect. And so now, if we make sure that this is set to placing tree absorber frames, we're gonna sneak right click onto the top of that chest. And I was really hoping that would work. Let me try replacing that chest with just like a regular block. That might work instead. One, two, three, like this. Nope, that also doesn't work. Do I have to place this onto the tree absorber itself? Let me get a, uh, a tree absorber actually made here. For that, we need four smooth stone, four planks, and an X. Annoyingly, I think I, oh, I didn't smelt my smooth stone because I forgot to put fuel in, which is actually quite helpful here. That is completely fine. Boom. And thankfully, you can use Xs that are basically broken to, uh, to do this craft, which is quite useful. Let's put you in and actually put some fuel in this time to get that uh, smelted. And then let's take this and let's put it Oh, it did put down one tier one support frame, which is interesting. Let's put this here. And then if I right click onto this, now collecting, check the structure. That's still not right. Okay, let's try moving this <laughs> out of the way. Uh, this is a pickaxe job, not a X job. That's fine. We can get another pickaxe. Uh, we are going to need more cobblestone. That's okay. How much compressed cobblestone do we have? We've got loads of compressed cobblestone. That is fantastic. I actually do want to get a couple more jumbo furnaces going. So I'll throw those in. I guess we can leave everything in there. All of that will get smelted up eventually. And then over here, we can just craft that down and get more cobblestone for our pickaxes. So let me try that again. If I get rid of you, we have 64 tier one support frames. And if I check the miner's guide again, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, it should just put everything down. So placing tree absorber, tree. Placing mining frame, tree absorber frames. There we go. Okay, that one did work. Cool. Chat is right here. A chest is not a good idea because you can't open a chest once there's something above it. So a barrel is going to work better for us here. For that, we are going to need uh, some more slabs, which I did have a second ago until I used them all. That is completely fine. Let's quickly get one more tree going here so we can get just a tiny bit more wood. I should probably put it over on this side where there's a bit more space that it's not going to conflict with the uh, miner there. That is fine. Let's grab these and then boom and boom and boom. Cool. Okay, so we're going to put this down where the uh, current piece of cobblestone is, like so. We're then going to place the tree absorber on top of that, like so. And then above that is where we're going to put a piece of dirt. And then above that is where we have to build the tree. So for the tree, we do need even more logs, which is fine. We can grow more logs. And we need, of course, enough leaves to actually build that uh, that custom tree. That should be fine. And this here should be enough logs. So once again, so long as we have all of our leaves and all of our logs on us, we should be able to take the structure placer, shift right click that to set it to placing a tree absorber, quickly sleep so that it's not quite so dark around here. And then if we just right click onto the dirt, I think it should place the uh, entire tree down for us. So if we just do this, it totally does, fantastic. And I think 
that this is working. And you'll see there the current tick rate is 220. And uh, over here, we can check and make sure this is set to, uh, to 200. It is indeed. And so now if we want to upgrade this, I guess all we need to do again, just like before, is um, place down some fences on top of the very top of this. Okay, cool. That is fine. We already have two fences, which is good. It means we only need to get one more set of oak fences to make this just that little bit faster. And then if we take those all the way to the top here, by the way, one thing I think I will do if it doesn't break is just do this to make it look a little bit more kind of intentional. I think that's fine. It is. And uh, it just mean, makes it look, you know, more like it's supposed to look as opposed to having like the barrel buried in the floor. But uh, over here, we can go one, two, three, and four. And again, just like before, we now have an ever so slightly faster wood generator. And look at that, we're passively generating logs, leaves, sticks, and apples. A surprising amount of apples as well, which is good because we do use a lot of our hunger when we, uh, when we use the ultimate, which we have been doing quite regularly. One thing that we did find out whilst we were uh, getting all of the stuff for the tier one support frame is that you can actually keep going with the cobblestone. You can put higher and higher and higher tiers of compressed cobblestone into the miner, you just need higher and higher tiers of support frame. So if you wanted to set up a cobblestone generator that produced tier two cobblestone, we would need tier three support frame. And it goes all the way up to the nine X compressed cobblestone. You can actually set up a miner that produces nine X compressed cobblestone if you have 36 lots of nine X compressed cobble, but it does require tier 10 support frame. And just for reference, one 9x compressed cobblestone is equal to 387,420,489 cobblestone. It's a staggering amount of cobblestone that you would get every time this miner produces cobblestone. And again, with the higher tier caps, you can make it produce that just staggeringly fast. I don't foresee us needing that much cobblestone uh, to complete the peg, but it is an option that we have available to us in the future. And with that, we're almost done. All we need to do is uh, grab this light gray colored stone. That's going to complete, I believe, the entirety of this quest line. Oh, never mind. We do need a prospector's pickaxe. This is actually very useful right now. We make it by smelting a regular pickaxe. Again, I think we can smelt one that's already a little broken. And the reason we need this is because we use this to break the light gray colored stone. And in doing so, this is going to allow us to progress on to the next chapter of the quest book here for coal fragments and lapis fragments, because using the prospector's pickaxe, that completes the first chapter of the quest book. And now, if we break the light-colored stone, I believe that we do get little fragments of coal and lapis. So next time, chat, we're going to come back and we're going to push forward. We have completed a few of the quests here kind of accidentally to make uh, clay, to make sand. Uh, we did make gravel. For some reason, that has uh, not triggered in the quest book. That is fine, though. We can do that to uh, kind of force it to trigger. Fantastic. There's also a quest here for grout, which... Seems pretty doable, actually. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. That's going to get us uh, four sand. And then we just need one clay. Perfect, which we can then craft into one grout. Nice. Uh, can be made in a tier three miner after crafting 36 of the block. Interesting. And uh, it looks like we're going to use that to move on to getting coke brick, and then we can use that to getting uh, some advanced crafting tables. And... Our main goal at the minute to complete basic tech is going to be to get a basic tech ingot. The basic tech ingot is not a cheap recipe by any stretch of the imagination, but it's hopefully one that we should be able to get sooner rather than later. But uh, next time we'll come back, we'll look at setting up miners for colon lapis. So if we can get 36 of each of these ores, we can then begin to, uh, to set up miners for those to passively generate coal and lapis. And then we can use those to get uh, conveyor belts, which are then going to allow us to, uh, to start automating a little bit easier, which is going to be good as well. And then we can push further forward and see about getting our first techium ingots. And of course, as we go, we can also look at uh, trying to make our base look just that little bit nicer. Not quite sure if we're going to need the cobblestone generator too much going forward, especially now that we have so much compressed cobblestone coming in. Speaking of which, let's throw even more of that uh, in there. How many of these can I make? 45 more let's throw you in as well because having this be faster is just kind of a straight upgrade all around the more of these we have the uh the better things are we need two more that is actually completely fine let's do that and this that's going to give us six jumbo furnaces allowing us to smelt seven items at a time which is going to be particularly useful for getting a large amount of lapis and coal because now what we want to do is of course just take a bunch of stone throw that in there and uh, smelt it like three times until we get the gray colored stone, which we can then break with our prospector's pick. Of course, we can put down multiple and then use the ultimine to ultimine a lot of it. 
But, uh, but yeah, next time we'll come back, we'll work through that and continue on our quest to get to basic Technium ingots. And then, of course, we can start moving through Advanced Elite Ultimate Hellish Void and Final before we complete the pack. But those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Techopolis 2 there.